Hello, my dear students. Welcome to Learn Right Biology. We have been treating specialized eukaryotic cells. We named examples of specialized eukaryotic cells in animals. And we have taken care of the spermatozoon in the previous lesson. In this lesson, we want to look at red blood cells. We want to look at the red blood cell. In fact, the red blood cell is scientifically referred to as erythrocyte. Erythrocyte. Don't forget, I told you the full name for sperm cell is spermatozoon. Plural spermatozoa is spermatozoa. Spermatozoon. So that's sperm cell for reproduction. Let's look at red blood cell. That is for transport of oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body, the tissues. The transport of carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs to be breathed out. How is the red blood cell adapted to perform this function? It's very important. Sometimes you feel weak. Sometimes when you are sick, some symptoms, a body weakness. In some cases, you don't have enough red blood cells to carry enough oxygen to your tissues so you don't have enough energy, so you become weak. You feel weak. You are said to be suffering from anemia. See? So red blood cells are for transport of oxygen. I hope it's clear. Why is that sperm cells cannot do this? Nerve cells cannot do this. Cones in the eye for color vision cannot do this. Red blood cells are specially adapted for that. Let's look at the red blood cell. Nice on your screen. But let's draw them in the classroom. They have a round outline. They are by concave disc. By concave, you know, a cave. So by concave discs. So you can see them. They are by concave discs. So this one sort of cave. So on both sides, by concave disc. The red blood cells lack nucleus. They lack nucleus. So let's use this to show the disc, the cave. By concave disc. They lack nucleus. You remember, the nucleus is the largest organelle in an animal cell. It's large enough. The absence of nucleus will give more room, more space, more volume for oxygen to be transported. In fact, the red blood cell is serious, so no nucleus here. No nucleus. You know, nucleus, the headquarters of the cell, so that will be respected. No, 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 we want to be serious and carry oxygen. The red blood cell cannot reproduce themselves. A special type of cells in the bone marrow that produce red blood cell. They don't have nucleus. Because I told you that one of the importance of nucleus is for cell division. So one may ask, how can they even ensure uh, transmission of hereditary features? You understand that? So they lack nucleus in order to have more space, more volume to transport oxygen. More space to carry oxygen. I hope it's clear. Then another point is that they have what you call hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a red pigment in blood. So if you remove hemoglobin from red blood cells, red blood cells are not red. 
If we remove all red blood cells from blood, blood is no longer red. Because the red color is provided by the presence of red blood cells. So the red blood cells are red because of the presence of hemoglobin. I don't forget. The mammalian blood is red because of the presence of the red blood cells. Red blood cell, hemoglobin, and so what? Hemoglobin is an ion containing compound. Very soon you'll be doing chemistry, you realize that some ion, at certain stage, you know, ion is red. So hemoglobin, the function of hemoglobin is to carry oxygen. You know, when oxygen enters the lungs, there's the need for the body to be able to pick the oxygen. So it's a hemoglobin that's chemically designed to be able to bind with oxygen, to bind loosely with the oxygen, so that it will carry the oxygen to the tissues. In the tissue, the oxygen will be dislodged for the tissue to use. I hope it is clear. And the hemoglobin may also carry carbon dioxide back to the lungs. I hope you are okay. So, that's the function of hemoglobin. It's a red pigment. So, you have look at the first adaptive feature. Absence of nucleus provide large volume to transport enough oxygen. Presence of hemoglobin that will pick up oxygen. Then, the red blood cells, you know, they are pliable. Pliable. They are plastic. Where are they carrying oxygen to? To the tissues. You remember blood vessels? We have arteries. They are big. They are like blood vessels. The arteries will branch into arterioles in the organ. For instance, the heart. You understand that? Then, let me demonstrate it for you to see. So, this is a blood vessel carrying blood from the heart. Then the body, this is the iota, this is the artery carrying blood to an organ such as the kidney, such as the, uh, such as the liver, your legs. So when the artery, this artery, reaches the organ, this is the organ. It divides into arterial. Have you seen? The size has reduced. The arterial will divide into what you call capillary. Very small. But the capillaries are microscopic. So these are the cells. So that each cell will have contact with a capillary. Isn't it interesting? Yes. This is how your classrooms are also built. You don't enter this classroom and enter another classroom, another classroom. No. Each classroom, you have a corridor here and some school corridor at the back. Or open place for easy communication. So this is a cell. This is another cell. This is a cell. This is a cell. This is black capillary. So red blood cells are here. Very big. Big. That's moving. So no problem. No problem. They are carrying oxygen. By the time they get here, the capillaries are narrow. And, but they are round. Red blood cells are round. So there's a need for the red blood cells to be able to squeeze. That's what's meant by being pliable. They're able to squeeze through narrow capillaries. So the round thing now has become this. 
to be able to reach capillary safely. But they continue to what you call vein. And the blood, and when they get here, they come back to their normal round outline. I hope it's clear. So, absence of nucleus provides a large volume, presence of hemoglobin to pick oxygen in the lungs. The pliable nature to be able to squeeze through narrow capillaries to reach the tissues. And the fact that they are by concave ensure that they are closely packed. I hope you can see. So that a lot of them will be involved. They carry oxygen together. Let's go. We are going. Carry oxygen. This is not interesting. If they were to be four squared, cannot be, may not be easily loose pack or irregular in shape. But all of them. So you can pack them nicely. I hope you can pack your coins nicely. Coin. So the size, the shape. I hope you are okay. Red blood cell producing the bone marrow. They are fine in the blood. They carry oxygen. From the lungs to the tissue for respiration, for energy. Adaptive features to function. Absence of nuclear provide a large volume to carry enough oxygen. Presence of hemoglobin to pick oxygen. They are pliable in order to be able to squeeze and pass through narrow capillaries and reach the tissues safely with oxygen. They by concave shape ensures close packing so that enough oxygen will be carried. They are thin wall that will ensure that oxygen easily diffuses into the red blood cell. Then absence of the nucleus to ensure that we have enough space to carry enough oxygen. The presence of hemoglobin that will bind with the oxygen that have entered that it will not get back. The pliable nature so that to be able to reach, to be able to pass through narrow capillaries so that oxygen will be sent to the tissues. The biconcave nature will ensure close packing so that more red blood cells will be involved together. It's not like this one is going, so wait, all of them can go at once. All will ensure efficiency of transport of oxygen. Thank you for watching Learn Right Biology. Join me in the next video where we look at more specialized eukaryotic cells. Bye-bye.